Hello, I'm David Stoudemire. I'm a retired professor of computer science from the University of Hawaii. And I'm going to talk about the downloadable Ask Constants program for Mathematica. And what it can do is it, instead of taking uh, exact formulas like pi plus the square root of 2 uh, and, computi and computing a floating point number, it can go the other way. Sort of magically can unscramble an egg and find out for you an exact formula that corresponds to your float sometimes. I got intrigued the first time I saw this program that you would give it a floating point number that you'd perhaps computed by integration or find root or something where you couldn't find an analytical answer. And uh, you'd, you'd feed it in that floating point number and it would feed you back some candidate ex uh, closed form constant expressions like pi over 2 plus the square root of 3 uh, <coughs> that were uh, candidates for what, uh, what that float would approach the limit of that float as you increase your working precision. And I was, just, I was smitten by it. I said, that's just a magic. And so uh, I brought along a magic hat. And it's like, it's like unscrambling an egg, you know? There's a, there's a broken egg, OK? And putting it in there, and then, lo and behold, abracadabra becomes whole again, yeah? Resurrected. And uh, so, uh, wow, uh, that's magical. And so I wanted to do a program like that, uh, mainly because I needed, a, a, a Wolfram Alpha, Alpha actually does this. But I needed a function. Yeah, I know, the, the, the culprit's right there. I needed a function, because uh, I was going to use it in another program, and I wanted to call it and use the results. Uh, so uh, I, I, I wrote my own, and uh, here it is. Um, I'm going to show you an example. Uh, you can just, what you, here's where you type your float in, but uh, I'm not a very good typist uh, uh, in awkward positions like this, so I'm just going to click on, there's some canned examples that are, in, uh, that are in here, and it's actually a good idea to do them anyway, so you get an idea of what the program does when you first use it. So there's a float. Um, press the Go button. This particular float, yeah, there's one candidate that it has, okay? This particular float, uh, was a four-dimensional quadrature that no computer algebra system could do symbolically. And uh, one of the pioneers in this whole area, David Bailey, uh, uh, used it and found uh, this expression using one of these other programs. And uh, so uh, this program does it too. Uh, and what's this over here? Well, this is a plot of that point, that one expression is showing there. It plots, entropy is a measure of complexity. Okay? You think of leaf count, plus, uh, leaf count plus byte count, somewhere in between. Okay? It's actually, the entropy of a, of, a, an, uh, of a number is a base two logarithm of its absolute value of, of an integer, and uh, non-zero integer. And so I just take those and add those all up for, um, for all the integers that are in there, including the numerators and denominators. And then I add about one for every operator uh, or symbolic constant like pi. And uh, add that all together, except I use base 10 logs because I want to compare that complexity me measure directly against the agreement, the number of digits that agree between the float and this proposal for what explains the float. So these are the same units on the two axes. And uh, what I found is that this method I'm using uh, tends to have a lot of uh, bogus ones. You can go over there, and, and they're just bogus. A lot of them have huge coefficients, uh, which is a sign of overfit. Okay? I have a models, I have a bunch of models in there, and I just essentially try to fit unknown coefficients for them. And uh, these are, a lot of these are, bo these are all bogus. And I found that the bogus ones tend to line up along the, the, the lower left corner of the, uh, of the uh, plot region. And that suggested that a good, and then the good ones were tended to be up more towards the upper left corner. And that's so that the, the difference in those two, agreement minus entropy, the, ent the agreement margin, uh, was a good discrimination function. And it converted a dual objective uh, uh, optimization problem where you want, you want high agreement, but you want low complexity. And so this creates a dual objective problem into a single objective problem. And it really tends to discriminate. When you see it visually like this, uh, the function is fine, and, 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 and uh, you can use it. But when you see, I, I don't want to actually return all these rejects, because it just, you just look at it and say, whoa, what's what? And it takes you a long time to figure out what is the one you want. But here on the plot, it's very clear which one is, is the winner in here. Okay? 
Now, how do I, how, that's, this is not a proof. It's just, this is a conjecture generator. That's what it is. Uh, and if you're not given to proofs, uh, what you can do is simply recompute it, uh, the expression, if I, once I have this, well, recompute the float, the quadrature, the four-dimensional quadrature, to higher and higher precision. If, if the agreement just keeps climbing, and climbing and climbing, I got, you know, as far as you go, that's a pretty good sign that your conjecture is actually true. If it stops at a point and just sits there, that's it. The bogus is, is revealed. Here's another example. This is one, in this case, instead of putting the float in, I put the numerical function that generates it. Uh, this is a float that any beginning calculus student can. It's just the integral of 1 over x. And the upper limit is a quadratic number. And the lower limit, the, the log is 0 there. So uh, let's press go on this. The reason for the quotes, if I left the quotes off, when, I, when it evaluated, it would replace my input with the floating point number, and then I would lose this information that I wanted to continue. So I make it a string, and then uh, two expression from string, and then that's evaluated. This time it found uh, quite a few answers, okay? And our original input is right, what, what you would get in a beginning calculus course, I think most students, most of you would get, most of the students would, would return the log answer. But there's actually three others that it found that have uh, the same, they're the same value, uh, they, they're, they're equivalent, but they had lower entropy. So these are sorted by diminishing entropy. And then there were three more, uh, uh, five more that had uh, higher entropy. So it found them all. How did it know they were equivalent? Well, it used possible zero Q function, the, the mathematical possible zero Q function, on the differences between the two. And so it, it, it established beyond a reasonable doubt that these were equivalent. And the value of hooking them together here is if I didn't hook them together and didn't check to see if they're equivalent, then the user who wants to find a proof, he has seven different things he can try to prove. This, he only has to prove one of these then, and he's proven them, he's proven them all. And, and you can't say which one's best. It depends on, on what the purpose is. You know, he, he really might want an arctangent, a hyperbolic arctangent, or a log, or something like that. You can choose the functions. There's a set of basic functions. Um, you can choose the functions that are in the basis for this search, or at least for one. It's a really two, there's two algorithms in the search. And the first one is a big lookup table. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's fixed. It takes a lot of work for me to generate that table, and it's fixed. Uh, so uh, if, if you get the answer from that table, even if you don't choose a function, if, it's, if, you, know, if you use one of these functions you haven't selected, here's another, here's another one, factorial family. For example, if you choose one, you know, if you, you, you can get an answer that isn't actually checked off. But if it's in the second phase of the search, uh, that's, and that's the, it's the more time consuming part, uh, uh, you have to have that function checked in order for it to, uh, to, to find it. Now you see some un you'll see some functions here that aren't built in Mathematica functions, real inverse that, real inverse this. Well, this, the, the, the method that I use, the second method requires inverse functions. For every function you want to recognize, you have to have an inverse. And for a multi-branched function, you have to have all the branches covered. And very few of the special functions have inverses. ERF does, Haversine does, maybe one or two others. And the reason is, is that Mathematica special functions work over the complex domain, usually for, if it's two parameters like Bessel function, both of them completely over the whole complex plane. That is a very hard job to get, get an inverse that's going to work for all of that. But I'm only interested in reals. And so it wasn't all that hard to write real inverse functions for about 50 special functions in Mathematica. And uh, so um, you'll notice that, for example, for gamma, uh, real inverse gamma is actually checked already. I, I, I think it's a very common, uh, relatively common choice, and it doesn't cost me that much. So let's do the next example here. Oops, that's the same example. I meant to do five. And there's an example where, where uh, real inverse gamma came in, because the find root up here. 
uh, I'm essentially inverting this, uh, this, this equation up there. And another example is uh, this is an integral that, that uh, Mathematica can do symbolically, uh, but, it, but it illustrated uh, something really nicely, so I chose it anyway. And that, that way I know if it's the right answer. This particular one um, <coughs> uh, uh, involves a constant glacier. Now, I didn't know what that, I thought that was an ice field or uh, something like that. Uh, but I didn't know what it was. But you can also choose named constants. And uh, uh, basic ones are, are, you know, the ones, even as a, as a matter of fact, as, when I was a calculus student, I think I knew about pi and Euler gamma, but these other three I'd never heard about. So, uh, but there's a lot of interesting ones. For example, uh, Function approximation, um, uh, en enumeration, um, function iteration. Some of the names are actually quite interesting. Uh, like the, 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 fun, the, the constant name ubiquitous. Who's ever seen it? But it's your name ubiquitous. Uh, so it's kind of fun just to trot around. Now, this guy, I think I've met this guy somewhere, trot. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so you can choose some constants. I have uh, Stephen Finch wrote an award-winning book on mathematical constants, and I, I took about 140 of them. Uh, how many uh, uh, constants? 109 of them so far that I put in there. Um, but uh, you can choose them, and that's where this glacier constant came from. Okay. And another nice choice is uh, is just. Try a random one, OK? And uh, this is a random 16-digit float. And all I get is rejects. And that's, that is the way it almost always is. Uh, you rarely get anything that's rated more than bad. Bad is the merit. That's the, mar the margin, the agreement minus the entropy, 10. And uh, you rarely get a, a random float to get even up in this bar. Where the, I think once I've seen it up in the poor, OK? And that's because. The reals are uncountable, uh, but, the, but the set of all formulas you can write is countable, with, with you know, finite number of them. It's kind of, well, it's countable, period. And so uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the reals are the, uh, the formula, the ones that have a formula that you can attribute them to uh, correctly is a, is a set of measure zero. Well, it isn't a set of measure zero, because I'm only using 16-digit floats here. Um, uh, but, so, but, but, but in fact, 16 is enough so that you just simply uh, almost always get things out. Now here's, you notice they sort of clump in two. That, that first phase, table lookup, tends to give things down here with, with modest coefficients. They're like two digits and so on. These are all, uh, you know, they, they, these ones look like they could be plausible. Uh, it's hard for me to, to keep that mouse on there, but yeah, OK. So, that, you know, but the thing is the agreement's very low in this case. These ones up here are done by find integer, integer null vector. Uh, it, it essentially does a linear least squares fit to a single data point. We just heard a statistics talk, uh, and most statisticians would laugh at you if, you if your data set side was one. But the difference is the coefficients, the unknown coefficients, have to be integers, see? And that, that, that's enough determination to, uh, to give you something. Um, so I noticed, and in fact, this, this, this example like with the uh, inverse hyperbolics, some of those answers were better than the, answer, than the usual uh, answer of log, uh, log of a quadratic number. And that's the one that almost every calculus book would list, because, because they study hyperbolics and inverse hyperbolics way at the end of the course if they have time. And so the, the students never learn those. Uh, but I noticed that often, when I, when I took examples out of integral tables and tables of uh, infinite series uh, cl close forms, uh, I noticed that. Fairly often, the answer was simpler than the one in the table or the one in the calculus book. And so uh, that gave me the idea to make a simplification function based on that. It's kind of like a backdoor quantum tunneling or something. You, you, have a, you start with an action. And this, for, this, for this one, you actually start with a, a, an actual formula. Like here's a double factorial example. 
That's a horrible, horrible looking expression, very ugly, okay? Then you value, you figure out how many, uh, you can measure the entropy of this input because it's a non-float. So you measure the entropy, you, you compute the ent entropy of it, and you add on a certain amount, like 10 more, and you say, that's the precision I'm gonna use. And if it's modeled, if, it's a, if, 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 if in fact the, what this could simplify to, or this itself was modeled, uh, then it's very highly likely that uh, I'll come up with that. Okay, so it's a kind of a funny tunneling. You, you go to the float, even you go to the float, but you come back with a, a non-float answer, which may. But here, let's do this. Beautiful, 31 over 29 double factorial. Big simplification. The uh, input had entropy uh, about 30, and this one has about five. So it's a uh, big reduction. Okay, and um, <coughs> here's another example. Oh, how do I know that's right? I mean, maybe it came back. Well, I use, here I have, again, I have two non-floats, so I use possible zero Q on the difference between them. And it goes up to like 100 digits or so, uh, and if it's still fine, it says, well, I'm not sure, but we'll say true. That's the way it works. Um, here's another interesting example. Um, this horrible nested radical, I say go, it actually could be boiled down to a, uh, a, a single sinusoid of a rational multiple of pi. I mean, there's a, everyone keeps, wants to go the other way. I think it's a kind of this compulsion, you know, get rid of the signs and make radicals. But here it's pretty clear uh, that the uh, sign is a certainly a more concise uh, representation. Entropy 10, uh, 5, 0.5 versus 20. Uh, here's another example. Um, uh, beyond Galois. Here's a root expression. And uh, there is a function in Mathematica called two radicals. Well, by very name, it wouldn't allow you to return this one. But I found uh, you can also have it. I mean, there are other, there are other kinds of closed forms uh, for root besides radicals. And trigonometric functions are one. Uh, trigonometric functions of uh, rational compositions of trigonometric functions of rational multiples of pi are algebraic numbers. So this goes in the other direction. And it does it. Uh, there, pro there may be an algorithm for going directly from, from here to here. I don't know. I haven't really explored it. But this does it by doing, uh, uh, figuring out a float that uh, has a precision uh, about 10 more than the, than the entropy of this the, the given expression. And then uh, uh, evaluating it to a float. And then uh, taking that float and, uh, and trying to uh, uh, fit it using, this pro using the proposed function. And then at the end, using possible zero Q to decide if it's equivalent. In this case, I could actually decide for sure by using uh, uh, root reduce. Okay, but it's root reduce, there's two methods, and sometimes one is pretty fast and the other is slow, and I, you know, it, it slowed it down too long, so I, I, much, but I, so I chose not to do that. So if you cancel the minus signs out there, you get a slightly lower entropy. That's exactly right, and uh, um, that is a, uh, something I'm going to work on. I, I, didn't, I didn't use uh, uh, the cancel function. Uh, in Mathematica, it seemed to me like it, it always happens just, to, that's exactly what it is. I want to I wanna multiply it by minus one if that'll reduce the number of, of minus signs. And I, I'm just gonna have to write my own function because I don't want to hit it with simplify uh, and maybe it, it will look all over the world for all kinds of things. And I, I just wanted a, a quick simplify and I discovered there is a quick simplify in Mathematica, undocumented, but it's in there somewhere. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, that's, uh, that's a thought, okay. Um, so, uh, let me just sort of tell you a little bit about this thing. Uh, it's freely downloadable from uh, askconstants.org, okay? And uh, it actually includes some packages with, which actually many people might find more valuable than this. Uh, it includes a, a zeros package, which is like the uh, Bessel, uh, Bessel J0 and Bessel Y0, Harry AI0. Those are four, there's four of them in Mathematica 10. I haven't looked in 11. This has about uh, 20 more that I, that I wrote up. And then there's uh, an FEMA and Suprema packages, which is analogous, except that it finds the, uh, the, uh, the poles and zeros and stuff uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, it gives the abscissas and the ordinates of the infima and suprema of about uh, 40 functions. And then there's about 40 uh, uh, real inverse functions that have been implemented, too, that might be more useful to some of you than, than, than this Ask Constance uh, program. And, uh, and also, the proposed function, uh, like I said, it's a function uh, available separately, and so is the n-simplify. Well, thank you very much. It was.